It is almost 11 o'clock here in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Today we're going to use the shadow and stick method to determine our principal directions. I'm using an arrow as my stick because it's nice and straight. Uh, this is actually a, a burn area here in the backyard. At exactly 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to place a small stone on the top of our shadow. As the shadow moves, I'll continue to place small stones on the tip of the shadow. And you'll see the shadow will grow shorter and then grow longer again. That'll give us our principal direction. Here in South America, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, but it moves to the northern sky. Uh, this can have the effect of completely messing up your sense of direction if you grew up in the northern hemisphere like I did. Okay, it is 11 o'clock. We're going to place our first stone right there on the tip of our shadow. And I've got a string here attached to the arrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a line using the string as a guide and we trace an arc. When the shadow reaches that arc again, it's going to give us our east-west line more exactly than any other, any other method. It is now 11.30 in the morning and you can see our shadow has already moved a half hour's worth of distance. I'm going to place my second stone now on the tip of that shadow and that gives us our first increment half hour movement. You see the shadow is already shorter, it's closer to the to the arrow. Uh, this will continue to grow shorter as uh, time goes on and around noon time the shadow will be as short as it, as it can be as the sun passes through the northern sky and begins to set in the west. We're going to keep marking that shadow. These two stones are already enough to give us a fairly accurate east-west line. Uh, it's not as accurate as if you let it go longer when this shadow becomes uh, long enough to touch the, the line in the afternoon. It'll give us a much more accurate east-west line. Okay, it is now 12, 12 noon. I'll put my third, my third stone down there. Theoretically, this should be our shortest shadow. Uh, we'll see here in a few minutes if it gets any shorter or continues to grow. And you can see it's also uh, moving away from our, our line that we drew originally. Now this should keep going and grow eventually this afternoon and give us a perfect east-west line. Once we determine the shortest shadow that we get, once the shadow begins to grow, that will give us a perfect north-south line because the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, travels through the northern sky. So this point at the base of the shadow will be due north and the other tip of the shadow will be due, due south and that line will intersect perfectly our east-west line here. So it pays to pay attention to make sure you find, uh, mark the exact point where your shadow is the shortest because that shows you where the sun is passing over directly overhead. Now exactly 1230. This is my fourth stone there. So it's already approaching the arc that we've drawn here again. Okay, it is now actually five minutes to one, and our shadow has already reached our arc again that we had drawn before. Put our last marker right there. It tells me that my 12 o'clock shadow was actually my shortest shadow. As you can see, these others are in a straight line, but the, the arc is arcing above here. If I take a straight edge and trace it through my 12, my 12 o'clock shadow, place a line in the ground there. That gives me my north-south line. Perpendicular to it, if I trace a line here. I've got my east-west line. This here is our north, east, south and west and I can assure you that the sun does rise over there and it sets over there now we have an accurate north and south line as well from this you can determine your compass directions uh, using the sun this took me about two hours to accomplish but it is very accurate